Okay, so Godzilla 2014. This is a movie that I've. Uh, this is like the first Godzilla movie I ever saw. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, that's nice. <laughs> uh, by the way, so this is the intro part that I'm actually recording. I'm recording this later because I forgot to talk about like what actually happens in the beginning. So enjoy that dumbassery of mine. But uh, hello everyone, I'm Nexus, and I'm reviewing Godzilla 2014 because why the hell not? It's the first Godzilla movie I ever saw in theaters. So I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Let's do this. Uh, so yeah, the movie starts off in the Philippines, and uh, it's like this mining incident, and we're introduced to Dr. Sarazawa right off the bat with his uh, um, with his assistant, which is Dr. Graham, if I believe so. Dr. Graham, I don't know. I'll I'll like throw up her name. Uh, yeah, Vivian Graham. Vivian Graham. Uh, shit. <laughs> yeah, and Dr. Sarazawa is played by Ken Watanabe. And both really great actor actors. Uh, yeah, let's just go with actors. Um, <laughs> and so there's like this mining incident, and like people went down. And so the owner of the mine, he like goes down with Sarazawa and Dr. Graham. Oh my God. If I'm messing up her name, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and so they they go into a mine shaft, and they find a Godzilla skeleton. Which is crazy. By the way, the intro credits to this movie are fucking amazing. Oh my god. Ah, oh, it's so cool. And like, it's and like in the theaters, I was like, this is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. They use Godzilla's old skeleton from the movies. It's like holy shit. You you can't get any better than this. Um. And yeah, uh, thirteen year old me. I was no, I was eleven. I was 11. Uh, 11 year old me was going crazy. I don't have to tell you that much. <laughs> so, yeah. They find these two spores. One of them's been open, so it leads out to the ocean. And then we head into our main cast. Now, this is where I'm going to mess up. <laughs> I'm going to put, like. So, afterwards, this is where my original intro is going to be, so just forgive me for that. Alright. Uh, where to begin? Okay, so for this movie, I don't think I even needed to uh, to watch it because I've seen it so many times. And the thing is, it's not even that good of a movie. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you can't tell by the title, I am doing Godzilla 2014 today. Why, you may ask? Because it's the first Godzilla movie I ever saw in theaters, and so... Yeah. The first time I saw this movie, I saw it in IMAX with my cousin and my parents, and the IMAX tickets were like $20 each, so it was $100 to see this movie, so that was nice. Um, but yeah, and uh, I think that's why I enjoyed it so much, because it was like the first and only IMAX movie I've ever seen, and it was awesome. It really was. Like, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed, like, the Mudo scenes. I enjoyed the Godzilla scenes, so... Why don't I summarize the plot for you? Basically, uh, Janjira, Japan, which I don't even know if it's, a, if it's a real place. I'll put up whether or not it is on the screen right here. Um, we meet these this American family that works there because, you know, why not? Um, <laughs> and anyways, they both work at a nuclear power plant. And uh, the power plant, it... Um, it has a meltdown, supposedly, or, like, earth an earthquake happens or something like that, and, uh, the main character, or the main character's dad, uh, or the main character's mom dies in the process, and it's Ford Brody, that's his name, he's played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, you might know him as Quicksilver in Avengers Age of Ultron, and then, uh, and then we cut to, like, a few years later when he's just getting off of, like, um... When he's just getting out from, like, military service, I guess. And, uh, he goes back home to his wife, which is played by Elizabeth Olsen, who plays Scarlet Witch in the Avengers movies. Um, then, God, I'm sorry if I sound, like, really, like, unenthusiastic, but then, like, his dad gets in trouble, and it's played by Brian Cranston, and he's, like, easily the most interesting character. And he's like, oh, my wife died here! You know, so we gotta go find our find our mom, and so Ford has to go to Japan because he got arrested for for breaking into a military zone, again, 
and it's it's really sad, but I mean, at the same time, uh, I mean, I guess you can kind of understand why he's doing this. Of course, we don't learn that till later. Um, then, then like, mm, trying to think of what happens next. Okay, then he has to go get him out, and we have this really funny scene where like this kid is has been detained and he's getting out, and like his parents are like. Or, like, yelling at him, like, specifically his dad, and it's like, shit. <laughs> and when I was younger, uh, I was I was pretty racist when I was younger, actually. I was like, damn, I wouldn't want to be in Japan. Uh, if that's the way the parents are, then holy shit. <laughs> um, which, I'm not, I don't know why, but I think that's, like, totally racist on my part. So, yeah, <laughs> that was funny. And then, uh, I think there was, like, it's supposed to be an Akira Takarada cameo in that scene, but they got rid of it, and only a still image exists of it, and unfortunately I can't pull it up because, uh, Share Factory, and, um, yeah, oh my god, then they go back to Brian Cranston's place, obviously Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Cranston, then, uh, they have to go back because they're like, okay, listen, we we can't just let this happen because, I mean, there's something going on here. And so they get into the zone where, or they get into the radioactive zone and they were like, hey, wait a minute. And this group of dogs runs by them and they're like, wait a minute, how are these dogs still alive? And so, um, oh my god, what is Brian Cranston's character's name? Uh, hold up, let me check this real quick. Joe. His name is Joe, and no, not Joe Mama. Obviously. <laughs> I just dated this video. That's nice. Um, well, yeah, Joe Brody, he takes his mask off, and he's like, oh, the air is clean. And so they start walking, and then the police, the Japanese police detain them, and so they get interviewed by Dr. Sarah Zong. By the way, oh my god, I forgot to mention. The movie starts off in the Philippines. Holy shit. <laughs> I gotta restart this now. <laughs> I'll just add that part in the beginning and just, like, move these clips, like, after I'm done, so, like, holy sh- uh, hold on. Okay, so my apologies for that. Anyways, yes, Dr. Sarazawa and his assistant, Dr. Graham, are watching, and they're like, wait, there's this data from, from the, uh, from that day when the nuclear power plant collapsed, and, uh, <laughs> Then they're like, I thought all the data from that day was 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 uh, was erased, and they're like, apparently it wasn't, and uh, so then like an EMP goes off because there's a spore that's there from the beginning, and we obviously know that this spore is of the Muto, and so the spore it breaks open uh, um, after an EMP goes off, and then Brian and then Joe Brody goes out. He's like watching on about what's happening because he's basically getting his answers as to what killed his wife. Um, and then, then, oh my God, then, then the Muto shows up, and it is easily one of the coolest in entrances ever. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's one of the coolest entrances in a monster movie, like, ever. The Muto is, like, one of my favorite monsters ever. Um, and, uh, so anyways, then, 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 then. Okay, then basically, Brian Cranston's character dies, Ford Brody survives, and he's like, oh, dad, no. And so they talk about this thing called echolocation, because Brian Cranston was studying that. And, uh... Yeah, I, I really suck at these movie reviews. <laughs> um, but that's besides the point. Um, yeah, Brian Cranston's character was studying echolocation, and so they were trying to see what was going on, and so they go to this place in... Oh, wait, no, 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 that happens way later in the movie. He was studying echolocation, and they were talking about the signals, and they talk about how Godzilla is basically coming back. But, uh, and so they send uh, Ford Brody to Honolulu, where he's going to take a plane to get back to San Francisco to see his wife. But before he can, uh, he a kid gets separated from his parents, so he takes the kid and he says he'll bring him back. And so on that, the Muto just so happens to end up on... Uh, oh my god. The Muto ends up on Honolulu, basically. Then, uh... Then, um... Oh my god. Then... 
Then uh, they send a special forces team to intercept it, and they find a nuclear sub which has gone missing. Very reminiscent of Godzilla 1984, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, <laughs> and the Muto's feeding on the nukes, because the Muto's like nuclear materials, they're parasites. And um, then... Then the Muto, like, sends an EMP, and so, like, all these planes crash, and they're like, oh, shit, and then, like, the water starts rising, or the water, like, flows back, like, it's, like, there's, like, a wave about to come in, and on, like, this beach, and then the water starts, like, coming toward towards everyone, and they're like, oh, shit, we gotta go, and so this family that we don't really care about, they're, like, in Honolulu, and they're on a vacation, they, oh, my God, they start running from the water, which is essentially a flood at this point, because Honolulu is being flooded now, which is nice, I guess, um, and they make it into this one building, and, like, you can see the glass start to crack when they make it into this building after, like, this huge flash flood happens. By the way, they showed a dog running, like, before everyone else, and I'm pretty sure everyone in the theater was like, oh, no, we gotta save the dog, <laughs> um, but yeah, once again, besides the point, um, then... You know, we see the glass cracking, and, like, these people on the roof, they're like, what's going on? And then, like, all of a sudden, like, you see these flares shoot up, and then it shows Godzilla's body. Keep in mind, this is, like, an hour into the movie. Um, and then, like, these soldiers start shooting at Godzilla, and it's doing nothing, and then Godzilla, like, you can see his tail, like, move past a building. And then you, and then the power comes back on, and so these, um, the, oh my god. The tram or whatever it's called? I don't know what it's called. Um, yeah, I think it's a tram. It's It turns back on because that happened after the uh, after the EMP. And so the lights start flickering on. And, like, you can see the Muto walking down the track. And it waits for them. And it bites down. And it waits for the track. Or it waits for the tram. And it bites down. And it basically, like, destroys the track. And so the train, like, derails. And the kid that uh, Ford Brody is, like, basically keep looking after, he, um... He, like, grabs him just in time, and then we can see, like, these, these, um, uh, these, this airport staff, that he's, like, hiding underneath a plane that's about to be, that's about to take off, and, like, you can see the water show up, and that's, like, a sign that Godzilla's there, and so, then an attack helicopter shows up and starts shooting at the, uh, at the Muto, but then he gets hit by a giant spine, and it crashes, and then, like, everyone in an airport is like, oh my god, and then they're just shut up by Godzilla's footsteps. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. And so the Muto, it, like, it sees Godzilla and, like, it it, uh, it does, like, an intimidation display where, like, it tries to make itself look bigger with its wings and it roars. And then it's, like, this pan-up shot, which is, like, easily the greatest thing for Godzilla. Like, one of the best Godzilla entrances, but not the best. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's one of the coolest Godzilla entrances. Like, it pans up. And then, like, you see Godzilla, and then he roars, but then it cuts away right as the fight's about to start. It's like, why? Why would you do that? <laughs> why? Oh, my God. So, then, we cut to Ford Brody's son at, at, his, uh, at his house, and he's watching the news, which I don't know why any kid would be watching the news, but it is. He is. And it shows, like, the fight on the TV screen, and I'm like, okay, listen, I'll let this slide this one time, but if you keep this as, if you keep this as a constant thing, I'm going to kill somebody. <laughs> so then, for some reason, uh, Ford gets his kid, gets the kid back to his parents, and then he's like, oh, shit, uh, there's military here, so he just goes with them, and they're like, you know what, good to have you on board, uh, welcome to the, we're monster hunters now, and so, Cut, flash forward, uh, Godzilla is now hunting the Mutos. They introduce the female Muto because they're like, wait, there's another signal that looks exactly like this signal that the male Muto is sending out. And so they're like, well, what about the two spores? There were two of them. And they were like, oh, we took the other one to a nuclear dump site in Nebraska. Or not, not Nebraska, Nevada. Nevada, not Nebraska. Why did I say Nebraska? In Nevada. And so they go there and... They find out that one of the uh, one of the bunkers is open has been broken through from the inside, and then they see this giant Muto walking. It doesn't have wings though, and it destroys Las Vegas. Um, 
And they're like, do you think it's a different sex? And they're like, yeah. Yeah, so we've got the male Muto, which is the one with the wings, the female Muto, and Godzilla. Um, yeah, hold on one moment. <laughs> okay, so the Muto destroys Las Vegas. And so the military, they're like, okay, listen, these things are have EMPs attached to them, so let's turn these off. Or let's basically use nuclear warheads designed out of clockwork. Which is ingenious when you think about it, but I, I don't remember there ever being nuclear warheads that use clockwork. Uh, but it's still cool. I'm pretty sure it actually does exist, and I'm just stupid. Um, but once again, besides the point, um, then... Oh my god. Then... Um, they cut to a mountain scene where this train that's carrying the nukes are uh, are bas- is basically ambushed, and Ford Brody and some other guy whose name I can't remember, I think it was like Velasquez or something like that, I can't remember. <laughs> oh my god, it sounds so racist. Um, yeah, um, basically they get ambushed because the Muto is tracking, the female Muto is tracking them, and so it's actually really eerie because like you see the, the Muto like blends in with the mountain, and like it moves, and it's like, oh shit, and so, like, it's about to, like, kill Ford and, like, the other guy, but then, like, it hears the train, it attacks the train, we don't see it, though, and they have, and Ford and the other guy have to outrun it, and the other guy ends up dying, because the female Muto broke through the train tracks, or the bridge that they're on, um, because the Muto used an EMP to stop, oh my god, (laughs) okay, so beforehand, the Muto used an EMP and stopped a train, so they had to check what was going on on Ford, and a few other guys had to check for them, and everyone else stayed on the train. And once the train started up, the Muto went back for it, and blew up the train, and Ford went under, and there's like this nice transition where Ford's like about to drown, and they're like, oh my god, he's going under, and then it turns out to be that they're talking about Godzilla, and, um, then, oh my god, then just, like, more useless shit happens, where, like, we see, uh, Ford's wife and his son, and they get on a bus because San Francisco is being evacuated, because they're trying to lead Godzilla the Muto and the Mutos to San Francisco to nuke him, um, which is a dumb idea, because, once again, Godzilla feeds off of nuclear radiation, or feeds off of radiation, so, yeah, Whew. I'm sorry about that, <laughs> um, but then, uh, like, then the scene where Godzilla shows up, uh, in San, actually, no, 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 so first we have this, like, really interesting scene where, like, Dr. Sarazawa and this, uh, admiral, he, they're talking, and I forget their names, I'll, like, oh, put the admiral's name up on the screen, um, God damn it! Let me look up the ca- let me look at the cast right now. Um, <laughs> this is nice. Oh my god! Godzilla 2014 cast. Uh, come on, come on. Uh, Admiral Williams, that is his name. Admiral Williams. Um, <laughs> they're talking and they're like, "Listen, we can't kill these creatures by ourselves. Nature has an order." And Godzilla is that order. He's going to restore balance, which is a really nice, like, touch, I guess. You know, Godzilla is nature's balance. Um, and he's like, let them fight. And so that's what they do. And then we see this awesome intro to the to the male Muto again. And uh, it was this clip that got, like, released before the movie. And, like, it makes this roar that we never hear again. It's like a boom. Kind of like that. Oh, my God. That sounded so stupid. And then Godzilla shows up, and they fight, and then they cut away again after Ford Brody's wife gets into a subway shelter. Um, yeah, and then uh, then they say, oh, you know, we're going to perform a halo jump to get into, to retrieve the nukes that were stolen. And in this time, the Mutos have made it. Uh, They met up in San Francisco, they made it, and the female Muto in this fight lays her eggs and has made a nest. And the nuke is surrounding the nest. And there's a really nice reference, because, like, 
what they do is they get the nuke out of there, and Ford, he like, uh, or they they blow, and Ford goes back because he sees that there's an oil truck in there, so he turns it on, and there's like a bunch of baby Muto eggs. There's a bunch of Muto eggs around it, and so Ford, he uh, he he like opens up this uh, this oil canister and get or this oil tank for a truck and gets out of there in time and sets it on fire. And there's this really nice shot where like it pans over to a dragon, a dragon head, and it's a very obvious reference to King Ghidorah. Which by the way, there are like two references to the original monsters. There's one for Mothra in the scene when Ford and Joe go back to Janjira, and then there's also the King Ghidorah reference, um, and the Mothra reference is that there's a, there's a caterpillar in a cocoon, uh, or a pupa, I don't know what the, what the fuck you want to call it, a cocoon, and it's about to hatch, and it has the words Mothra on it, so it's, it was nice, it was a nice easter egg, I guess, um, but once again, besides the point, and so anyways, Ford bro- blows up the nest, the female Muto runs towards it as Godzilla's fighting the male Muto, which by the way, this uh, this final fight, it gets so good at times, but like they only show us like five seconds of it, and then it's like five minutes of the humans, and like we don't want that, which is like the main gripe with this movie that everyone has, is like, oh my god. You, you, you have so much opportunity here, but no, we gotta see the humans... And, uh, so the female Muto starts crying, and then Ford, he, like, backs up because he's kind of, like, exhausted. And, uh, he, like, breaks this tile off of this pillar, and the Muto sees it, and so he's like, oh, shit. And then this blue glow happens, and we're like, oh, my God, I think I know what's about to happen. And Godzilla uses his atomic breath for the first time in this movie. And it is so amazing. Like, you can, you can like, see this from the soldier's perspective. They're like, oh, shit, did you see that? And so... People wonder why Godzilla doesn't use it beforehand, and it's because Zamuto's EMP actually, like, drains his energy, and he only uses it as a last resort. Um, which is actually a really nice touch to it, and it's like, oh, shit, that's why. So Godzilla was trying to kill the Muto, basically, with his atomic breath, which was a good, which was a good thing, and then when the Muto was, like, down, the male Muto comes in and, like, starts fighting Godzilla, and the, the female Muto just kind of cries, Cry some more, and then uh, the soldiers get the nuclear warhead onto a boat, and um, when they start it up, it sends this uh, it sends this horn out, and uh, the female Muto hears it, and she starts running towards it towards the boat, and so the soldiers try to fight her off as good, as good as they can, but like she just takes them out like it's nothing, and they do manage to get the boat away. I can't remember how. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't remember how, but they do manage to get the boat away. And so then, uh, then the female Muto uses, like, another EMP to get, uh, after Ford, like, I don't know how, but I think they distract the female Muto somehow after the male Muto dies, which, by the way, throughout this entire time, Godzilla's been fighting the male Muto, and so, like, there's this one, like, scene where, like, the Muto's about to, like, fly in on Godzilla, and so he makes, like, a really quick thinking move, and he, like, slams the Muto into a, into a skyscraper, and it, like, stabs him in the head, and he, like, dies, and it's, like, a really cool death scene, I guess, and then Godzilla gets crushed, um, and, uh, then, oh my god... So yeah, then Godzilla, or no, the Mut- the female Muto is somehow distracted enough to where Ford can like push the boat away while the sol- while the soldiers like distract here, and he and he like starts up the boat again, and he like falls down after pushing it away, um, and then the boat turns off because the female Muto used one of her EMPs again, um. And is like about to kill Ford, and Ford's like, you know what, screw this, and he pulls out a pistol. <laughs> he pulls out a pistol and is about to shoot the female Mutu, and it like kind of like twitches, and we're like, what the hell? And he kind of looks at his pistol like, did that really just do something? And then we're, we see that it's actually Godzilla, and he pulls the Muto and does the greatest kill scene ever. They call it the kiss of death. <laughs> and he like grabs the Muto by the mouth, and he just like breathes his atomic breath down her throat and blows off her head and it's like oh shit dude in the theater everyone started clapping and they're like holy shit and i was and like 11 year old me was like you kick his fucking ass oh my god (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, my, my theater was, like, full of fanboys and old people. And, like, the fanboys are like, you kicked his fucking ass. Yeah. And then Godzilla falls down, and uh, he's obviously exhausted. And then the nuke goes off, and I'm assuming that's what powers Godzilla up um, enough. But, like, he's still, like, knocked unconscious. And so Dr. Sarazawa was looking at the rubble, like, the next morning. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, Ford gets, like, air, airlifted out of there. Like, even though the nuke going off would be enough to, like, would not be enough to, uh, or them, like, getting away from it, it would not be enough time to, like, get away from that nuke. So, they should be dead, but they're not, which is nice, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Whew! <sighs> I've been talking way too much. Um, yeah. So then, uh, Ford's like in in a crutch, and he's found his son, and they're at the San Francisco 49ers stadium, and uh, they they're at the San Francisco 49ers stadium, and he and like Ford's son like runs away, and he's like, "Mommy!" And so yeah, then Ford and his wife get reunited, and there's. And, uh, yeah, then Godzilla wakes up because he's like, oh, shit, I'm not dead. And, like, this news thing says Savior of Our City. And I think it also said King of the Monsters. I don't I don't know why. I, th- I think it did. I don't remember. But then Godzilla gives, like, a victory roar. Then he, like, falls, in- falls down into the ocean and just, like, swims away. And that's it. Uh, no end credit scene this time, but what would I give this movie? No end credit scene this time. Godzilla 2014. So, first off, <laughs> first off, uh, the movie just ends right there, no end credit scene, but still, decent movie so far, I, or decent movie, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it enough to go see it three times in the theater, um, <clears throat> anyways, my gripes with this movie, not enough Godzilla, this, this movie should have been titled Muto or Where's My Wife. Featuring Godzilla. <laughs> because Godzilla is not in his own movie. They don't show him until like an hour in. And it pissed me off. So badly. Um, another th- another gripe I have with the movie. Actually no that's about it. <laughs> um, oh yes but another gripe I have with the movie. Is that uh, Ford Brody was like easily the most interesting character. And they just killed him off in like the first 30 minutes. Um. And it would have been nice to have seen Ford Brody and Dr. Sarazawa like work together about things, but oh well. I guess they wanted Aaron Taylor Johnson to carry the movie, which he didn't. But it doesn't matter anyways. I can't really show on the actors for giving a bad performance. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> Never shit on the actors. Um, oh my god, that sounded so messed up. Um, but yeah. Movie, I still very much enjoy it. Recommend you check it out if you're trying, to, if you're like new to Godzilla. Um, other than that, uh, I'd give this movie like a solid eight out of ten. Not, nah, not a, not an eight out of ten, like a six out of ten. It's not perfect. It's not good. But it's enjoyable, at the least. <laughs> so yes, my throat's messed up now. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next video later.